Get ready for another episode of The Awake Space. I'm Lori Rivers, your host. And this is where you come for inspiration to help you with your aspirations and get some of the most important astrological information you can find on the internet to make sure you're up to date with the latest going ons up there. Because as above, so below. So I'm up way too late. You'll probably hear some owls hooting in the background. I don't know if you heard that. Sounds like a couple of great horned. Anyway, I'm contemplating the solstice. The solstice, and in the northern hemisphere, it is the summer solstice. Of course, in the southern hemisphere, it is the winter solstice. Regardless of where you live, it is a time of change. And with that, there's a lot of energy behind this. Now, the summer solstice officially happens at 8.55 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. That's minus 7 GMT, calculated for your own time zone. So for a lot of you, it'll be on, on the 21st. In the United States... It technically takes place on the 20th. So, what is the solstice? Well, it's an amazing time of energy. The summer solstice is when we have the most daylight of the year. The sun is at its highest point. And for those of us who are visually impaired and don't drive at night, it can be a sad time of year. We're like, oh, the sun winds in that day it's a great day but then we decrease the light until the winter solstice and we have more darkness unless you live on the equator then it's always equal there's a lot of traditions around the solstice and they come from almost every culture because it is a powerful time this solstice the summer solstice or the winter in the southern hemisphere I know I've got you Australians I, I know Um, it's when the sun reaches zero degrees cancer. And that's zero degrees, zero minutes. Remember, there's 59 minutes to every sign. Or 60, because we start from zero. So, cancer, most people think about it um, as a soft thing. But anybody who's gone through a natural childbirth without any kind of medication understands there's nothing soft about it. Anybody who has incubated an idea, a project, a child, anybody who's rescued an animal knows that nurturing something takes a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of patience, and a lot of boundaries, a lot of, a lot of effort. And in our society, we've really hosed the idea of motherhood. We've made it something inconsequential, something a mere biological function, and something women are supposed to toss their lives away for, or the birth parent toss their lives away for, self-sacrifice. And that's never what it was about. When you nurture something into its independence into its full fledged form Um, a lot of times you have to be stern a lot of times you have to have good boundaries and over giving means you deplete your resources and it certainly doesn't teach your offspring or your project or your clients or anything else anything worth having take it for a recovering codependent So this summer solstice, it has a lot of energy that starts the day. The moon transitions from Libra to Scorpio. That alone is a lot of energy. And then we have Jupiter stationing retrograde in Pisces. This is a big deal, guys. Jupiter in Pisces stationing retrograde, that's a lot of energy. 
that's way more energy than Mercury or retrograde. Um, does it mean we're going to have bad luck? No. No. But we are going to see past the illusions of over-optimism. Be very careful of rhetoric at this time and pay attention to it. Because Jupiter rules rhetoric. And we've had a lot of very optimistic rhetoric over the last few months, or at least the last month that Jupiter has been in Pisces. It's been very confusing when it comes to messaging and suddenly there's going to be a little bit more clarity it doesn't mean the dream has to die we got a sneak peek of 2022 um there's more to come with that i don't think 2022 is going to lack intensity in fact it starts with intensity don't be scared be prepared um But Sunday is a significant day, energy-wise. And uh, in the evening, we have the solstice. I got asked a bunch of questions on uh, TikTok, on my live stream, and people were asking if it was okay to manifest. First of all, you know where I stand. You're always manifesting. You are a co-creator of your reality. However, I know what the question means. You want to know, can you deliberately manifest? Well, Mercury is still retrograde. Mercury doesn't station direct until the 22nd. So I would suggest not trying to manifest anything new. But if you have a current project, an art piece that you're working on, something you've been digging into, this is a good time to manifest its nurturing. Okay, because... We're now coming into a season where it's a time to nurture things into being. If you've ever grown a plant, you know that it takes effort. You've got to remember to water it. You've got to remember to train it if it's a trailing plant or prune it. Uh, Again, nurturing something into being requires boundaries. It also means not forgetting yourself. Um, an example, one of one of my friend's um, daughter is breastfeeding a baby. They have to, she has to eat a lot more because she is producing the milk that is feeding the child. If she were to not take care of herself, she cannot take care of her infant. Including yourself in the picture is very much a part of this season. So if you've been bad about self-care then do it and that includes letting go of illusions and delusions that are hurting you such as imposter syndrome the saturn uranus square is asking all of us to knock it off so knock it off folks um i was talking with a client late this evening because they're in another part of the world in fact it was early this morning And um, they were like, so I guess I really need to let go of my imposter syndrome. I'm like, well, what's it doing for you? You know, really, what is it doing for you? Except giving you a story that's allowing you to procrastinate and not fill your cup. And how do you fill your cup? Well, besides eating and exercising and all that other good stuff, how are you meeting your ambitions? Because cancer energy is ambitious. When a mother's raising an offspring, she's trying to get them to their peak, and that requires ambition. How are you nurturing yourself? Okay, now I'm not talking about all mothers, I'm talking about an archetypical mother. You may not have had a mother who nurtured you in the way you needed to be nurtured. Instead of focusing on that story, even though it's important and you need to process it and yes, get support around that. But instead of focusing on that story in that way, ask yourself, what do you need to give you? How can you nurture yourself into becoming the you that can meet your ambitions? Don't tell me you don't have the resources or you don't know how. There are so many resources that don't cost a whole lot. That's what I'm going to challenge you to do. Jupiter in Pisces is now retrograde. And yes, I do have songbirds that sing at night. 
So we'll talk about Jupiter retrograde in the next segment and what you can do to surf that cosmic wave. So it's been a pretty crazy uh, Mercury retrograde season. We've had the Saturn Uranus square. We've had a lot of lunations that have been pretty intense. And so we may have missed some opportunities. And Jupiter in Pisces retrograde, well, that's going to let us take a look and review opportunities we may have missed. Maybe we had things we wanted to work on and we just couldn't get to it because of Mercury retrograde. Maybe we had things um, that were coming up that we weren't sure about and we weren't able to make decisions or our judgment was cloudy or whatever. With Jupiter retrograde, we're able to assess and pick up some things and possibly have some opportunities to pick up some lost, what we thought were lost opportunities. It might be a time you hear back about jobs. Um, it might be that somebody finally finds that email you sent and replies to you. It could be a whole lot of things. It depends on your chart. Speaking of charts, I have a summer solstice special right now. And you can get a personality reading. Um, you can book it with me for 50% off. And that is good until Monday, the 21st of June, 2021. It saves you 50% off the personality reading. And why did I do that? Well, one, it feels good to do. Um, I have so many great supporters. I offered it out to my patrons first and um, gave them the opportunity to snatch it up. I have limited booking space, so if you want to grab it, Make sure you do it before the 21st. If you're listening to this post the 21st, don't worry, don't worry. You can join Patreon and get 20% off any of my services. Because I want to make this as accessible as possible to as many people as possible. Um, I do have limited reading times because I am one person. And um, it's not always going to be at these prices, guys. Um... Eventually, I'm going to have to raise them because, again, there's only so much of me. And um, I'm trying to make a lot more content for you all that's easy to access as well. So if you head over to Patreon, the link is in the description. Um, Everybody gets discounts. Um, Everybody gets a chance to meet with me um, every other week at Coffee with Lori. In fact, we meet this Sunday, the 20th day that the solstice happens and we'll be talking about the solstice and midhavens and if you want to know more about midhavens go ahead and listen to the last episode um we talked about it there um again back to jupiter retrograde there's a lot of opportunities that you're going to be able to see that you weren't able to see just because of the way the cosmos was running. And this is good timing. It's going to be intense, I'm not going to lie, because the Saturn-Uranus square is ongoing throughout 2021. We have three exact moments. The first was February 17th. The second was um, last week. I'm sorry, the day's escaping me. Um... June 14th, there we go, and the final exact square will be December 24th. If you live somewhere with power outage issues, be prepared. Um, The whole point of this Saturn-Uranus square is to undo the shackles of social and cultural conditioning to rebuild ourselves, and that means getting rid of the stories that don't serve us. Because our reality is shaped by stories. That's what human beings do. Again, talking to my client um, in the early hours of this morning, um, I pointed out when they said, well, I have a really strong moral code. And I said, let's talk about that moral code. A lot of what you've described to me, I know as an anthropologist, are ideas that were designed when we started creating... um, 
systems where there were elite and non-elite people and the stories we've been told about this is what good people do were designed to keep good people impoverished to keep them down and so if you were socialized in a certain way um, you'll reach a level of success and um, to, to, to your idea of it and then you'll put the throttle on you'll stop and that is something important to remember. So we're all being asked to be a little more entrepreneurial, to be a little more inventive, to be a little more creative, to be more inspired, and let go of the chains placed on us by society. And this means reinventing. And it's a really uncomfortable thing. It is really uncomfortable. You cannot be in your comfort zone. Even if your comfort zone is misery and you want out of it, it is uncomfortable to leave I know it well but when you do oh gosh isn't it wonderful now this isn't going to be all ugly because we got Mars and Leo and we've got Venus coming into Leo on the 27th it's a very active week the solstice week you know we've got Jupiter retrograde we've got the solstice then on the 22nd we've got Mercury direct it stations direct it won't be moving forward yet, but it stations direct. That'll be an interesting day. It always is. And then we have um, Neptune stationing retrograde. That's more reality coming into the fore. Much more clear vision for all of us. And then we have um, uh, Venus ingressing into Leo on the 27th. So that's a heck of a lot of stuff in seven days. So expect it to be a very, very interesting. It could be productive. You could have a lot of things maturate, uh, mature. You could have things uh, show up out of the blue. You could meet lost connections. You can have a lot of great things happen this week. Um, it can also be a very frustrating week for some people because they're really sensitive to energy and they um, if you're not used to being extremely conscious and deliberate, it could be that you're tossed about by the cosmic tide. And, you know, that's why I work with our cosmic surfers in understanding the metaphysical movement of the energy. Not just the astrology, but the, the metaphysics that are at play. And, um, and, and it's, it's, it's as psychological as it is anything else, you know. Um, we can be really addicted to drama. Everybody's talking about being addicted to social media, but I'm like, people are really addicted to their stories. They're really addicted to having that person to blame. Um, and yeah, there's always somebody, if you got hurt, somebody is to blame. But the only person who can fix it is you. My cousin and I both had very screwed up childhoods. I'll never forget. We were in our 30s. And she looked at me and she goes, you know, I've just decided. No, I didn't mess it up. But I can clean it up. Just like my house. I don't always make all of the mess. But I like a clean house. And I'm going to see my life as a a house. And I'm just going to clean it up. And I thought that was the best analogy. The same goes with our stories. We can create a story that moves us forward, or we can keep a story that keeps us stuck and held back. And I've done it all. (laughs) I kept myself stuck for a really long time. I've been talking about that on TikTok. Um, That, you know, I've had 10 really good years. 10 really good years. Each year gets better than the last. And when I was 25, 30, 35, 40, (laughs) I I wasn't so convinced I would ever be in this position. And it's not financial. I mean, financially, it's, it's doing well. But it's that, just the peace, the peace, the self understanding the acceptance and the validation of self that is unparalleled, 
unparalleled that I, I couldn't have imagined feeling this way. Um, yeah, long journey. And you don't have to take as long as me. I've met young people who've done it, and I'm, I'm so excited to see where they're at in life. And it doesn't mean you're not working on other things. There's always more to clean up. But the big stuff, yeah, that can get tidied up. And that's what you get to do this summer. Make sure you're having some fun. It doesn't always have to cost a lot of money. You can buy some bubbles to blow or make them out of, you know, laundry, or not laundry, but dishwashing soap. You can make bubbles to blow with a bubble wand. Find your joy. Play with that inner child. That inner child is you. And Jupiter will help you find that retrograde. Not every retrograde is a bad thing. But shifts in energy are always intense. And that's why I'm giving the heads up for Sunday. That's all. It just means there's an energy change. And those of you who are sensitive are going to feel it. All right. I think it's time for patron shoutouts. Patron shoutouts. It has been just so much fun in the Discord server. So I'll talk about that in the next segment. And then we'll talk about uh, a few other important things coming up. All right, it's time for the patron shoutouts. I I really love these patrons. We now have a hundred and forty beautiful people supporting this project and um, the energy that's building is just amazing we're having a heck of a good time in the discord server Um, and we're meeting again this Sunday for Coffee with Lori remember every single patron has access to Coffee with Lori so let's take a look at what's going on in the Discord service. We have had some funny memes. People have been talking about awakenings, um, asking questions about crystals, asking questions about transits, and venting a little bit in the social off-topic thread. Um, there's been some energy. We have our horoscope discussions, and uh, people have been looking up their MCs and talking about those. We've got Bear and Amy's Brain and Sister Luck and Absolute and Magic being our most active users right now. You know, if you're in the Discord server and you're quiet, because we've got 70 members, um, you know, get your butts in there. And get chatting. We want to hear all of you. We've got Rage. We've got... Redhead Ashley, we've got Robin Fox, we've got Spiritually Me, we've got Wild Woman, White Dove, Winter, Yogi Hannah, Yaz, Olivia333, Nicole Cormier, who's a good friend of mine, she's also the numerology lady on TikTok, we've got the Momerator, we've got Michelle Harp, we've got Mango Juicer, um, Lime, Lauren B., Chrysalis Kirsten happens to be my best friend. Uh, Killing Kyle Bishop. Uh, uh, Jen. Jenny Bit. Jay Marriott. Julian Noel. Yvonne. ICTYM. Uh, hey Juicy. Healthy Pisces. Haluni Tooney. Guru Guru 96. Grezik. Dev Joy, Christ Gable, Shells, Caroline, Britt DeBell, Blub Blub, Bellicose, Becca Lou, Anna Lansberg, Annie, Angela, Amy Jane, Amy, Amy's Brain, of course, I've talked about her before, Alfonso, Alina. These are our most, these are our, our Patreon members or patrons and then uh in the discord server and then we've got some new patrons which is exciting uh katie and megan are our newest members so big shout outs to them um i want to thank all of you 
You're wonderful. So we're going to talk a little bit about the U.S. Pluto return that people keep talking about. And as a trained political analyst, I have a few words to say about the charts people are using. And um, I do have a YouTube video up in Patreon um, about that chart. I need to redo it. It uh, is not the best filmed, but... uh, I'll talk about the U.S. Pluto return and why I think the Sibley chart isn't the return chart. Um, Popular opinion. I don't think that the Sibley chart is the U.S. Pluto return chart to use, and here's why. July 4th, 1776, we issued a Declaration of Independence to the Crown, the British Royal Crown. That did not make us a country. It did start a revolution. And so that is the Pluto return of the revolution, but not the nation. The nation didn't form officially until 1787. And we did not have a constitution, which is the governing document, until 1789. So there are multiple returns we're running into. Um, So, now, are we going to have a revolution this time? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think as much as they try to drum it up, we will. Not like people think. I think there may be some kind of skirmishes, but it's really the way the world works today. I don't think it's going to happen in the way people fear. Um, I think it's become pretty evident. I think we would have had it before now, to be honest. Um, But we do have sweeping changes coming, and I think it's going to be a very different kind of people power action. And you have to remember, again, I'm a political analyst by training um, even in the um, the first revolution, a third of the country was for it, a third of the country was against it, and a third was just trying to get by. <clears throat> and I think we're going to see pretty similar numbers when it comes to that. Um, what we do know going forward is we're coming into a time of great change. Now, I saw an amazing um, revelation that it actually... <laughs> is also the Pluto return of modern capitalism because the beginning of the Industrial Revolution really started in the late 18th century. Um, That was the precursor. Adam Smith published his work in 1776. We are seeing late-stage capitalism, and we are watching it flail. I think we are going to see some comeuppance in that. To be honest, uh, again, uh, it's a political analyst. You study a lot of history. Where we're at today, it looks a hell of a lot like feudalism. It's just monarchies aren't what are happening. Um, We're already watching the beginning of a new labor movement as people refuse to be in jobs that are poorly paid. Um, Honestly, guys, I just don't see the Sibley chart. Um, I think we'll see more of the reckoning happen in in 1787 and the 1789 chart. And if you're curious, you can look that up um, through the Astro Data Bank and look at those charts. Um, They have them. I think people just, we've had so much indoctrination about, you know, what makes America, America, and we look at that declaration because it was a a brilliant Dear John letter to the Crown, but it did not establish us as a country. It was the conception. It was not the birth. So, there we go. That's my opinion. Um, There is a lot of stuff coming with it, and I think we can expect intensity to continue. I can assure you there is more destabilizing and disruption to what we have been thought to be, you know, taught to be our normal, what we think of as our normal, um, 
the, the propaganda of the American dream, the consumerism, all of, all of that that we really had post-World War II is, is really having its comeuppance as well. And I think we're going to see a lot more community building. I think people are really being driven to that. I see that in a lot of my readings. People are really looking at that. How can they both better themselves and and be in community with others? And I think the pandemic has really served it in, in a good way in that respect. It's making us think outside of ourselves and yet at the same time cause us to reflect within. I also think we're going to see some um, changes to religion in general. I mean, we already have. We're looking at people becoming more spiritual. And I, uh, this is another one for that Jupiter retrograde. Um, re-evaluating our spiritual beliefs. And that's been something I've been urging people all along. You know, if you've left organized religion, unpack the dogma. You know, most people don't unpack the dogma. They, they, they bring a lot of it with them in their baggage. It's like when you try to leave your town, you bring your, your issues from your small town with you wherever you go until you take a look at them. Examine your beliefs. This will be a summer of self-examination. Uh, please, no recrimination towards self. You don't need to beat yourself up. That doesn't make you a good, good person. The whole need to confess your sins, all of that, that's not necessary. You can just acknowledge where you've allowed yourself to be led astray or where you didn't really have a choice and you now understand things in a new way. Um, the important thing is moving forward, ever forward. And that is what we need to do. We need to keep focused on the goal and stay as aligned as possible to our joy this summer. That will make it so much easier. And I'm going to continue to talk about that as we go along. So again, take advantage of your 50% off savings on personality readings. This is your natal chart. I go around the wheel. I explain your natal chart in great detail. Um, most people are pretty floored by the amount of information they get in that hour with me. It is, um, it's often life changing. You never know. So, uh, you'll use the code in the description and it's good until Monday, Monday, uh, June 21st. And I want to thank you for listening. This is a pretty short episode, but you know, it's like 3.53 AM on June 19th. Um, and by the way, it's nice that Juneteenth has been made a federal holiday in the U.S. And um, let's make sure people can vote. I'm Lori, and I'll be talking to you uh, again soon. Most likely when Mercury goes direct.